Hey there aviators, Igor here, and in today's video we're drawing fighter planes. So let's go ahead and get into it. Looking at the examples that I've provided for you guys, you can see that the variety of types of planes that you can draw is limitless. And here is the approach that I use to draw them. We'll begin by drawing two rectangles, one for the main wings, one for the tail fins. And afterwards you connect those with the fuselage. I also added more surface area to the tail fins. Now I continue to refine the drawing a bit by finding center lines of the fuselage. This helps me determine the position of the cockpit. As you can see from the time lapse, various elements need to be redrawn and adjusted. I do this all the time. Uh, it's really hard to hit things on the first go. But with that said, this is our first airplane sketch. Remember to add details like ailerons, machine gun ports, and exhaust manifolds. It really helps sell the whole design of the plane. Let's go ahead and take a look at another time lapse. This drawing did not end up turning out to be my favorite, but there are still elements within it that I want to talk about that will most likely help you. As you can see here, I'm drawing simple rectangles and making adjustments for them. Sometimes even a rectangle near another rectangle can be uh, measured wrong. So you can see me making smaller adjustments like extending the uh, rear tail fins and seeing if that angle of the tail fin um, wing itself matches the edge of the bigger wing. You saw me do that with the little sketch. Here I'm trying to figure out how to put in a vertical tail fin and how to have it nicely incorporate into the rest of the drawing without it looking lopsided. So I went ahead and drew one in. I'm extending the wings. A lot of World War II fighters had quite a bit longer wings. And the wings would be thin at the back and nice and rounded at the front. And they would also sit lower in the fuselage. So that is something to consider. Uh, one thing that I wish I did different on this drawing was make the fuselage itself a bit thicker. I didn't do that. Um, so the wings end up looking really huge. The cockpit looks tiny and the fuselage looks very thin so that's my criticism looking at it now but i just wanted to give you guys again a rundown of this drawing and explaining you know all of the things that i could improve on like seeing that the fuselage was thin you can see now that i'm focused on adding details where i break up the different sections of the plane to like the engine compartment i have a little a sheet lining around the wing that helps aerodynamically like blend it into the fuselage here you see me trimming the wings down I try and think about the shape that I create on one wing and where how much of that wing is trimmed and uh, mirror it to the opposite wing so that they're consistent here you see me trying to put in some exhaust manifolds sticking out of the engine uh, the engine compartment but I didn't like a lot of how these turned out so I just deleted it uh, drawing in little aerodynamic lines to see if I can make the fuselage shape more interesting but it kind of just made it messy here you see me go being going back in I thought that the tail fins were way too thick so I'm trimming down again both of the edges on either side and uh, trimming the vertical tail fin as well putting in flaps or ailerons uh, however you want to call them and uh, now that I thought that the sketch was fine I went ahead and uh, flipped it so then I can kind of take a look and see that the measurements are close enough and now I'm gonna quickly color it in and I do the same steps for most drawings is you just fill in the color first then you look for for shadows then you look for highlights so you'll see me doing just that. Now for color choices, you can pretty much do anything, but if you want to have a slightly more believable uh, airplane design, then it's a good idea to look at references and copy like historical camouflage or liveries, uh, and that can really elevate your design to kind of like that next level. So here you just see me continuing to map out different sections of the plane, putting in a darker color for the shadows, and uh, the highlights are already kind of painting themselves in, but now I'm gonna go in and touch it up a bit more with some even lighter colors. 
So as I wrap up this time lapse, again, I just wanted to show you that, you know, sometimes we draw stuff that we don't absolutely love. Like here, you can see me adding even little details to the wings, but it just doesn't look finished enough. Uh, and that's okay. Um, you know, we learn from our mistakes. So here is a much, much better example. This is something that I ended up being a lot more happier with. And here we have a whole different angle for the airplane. Now it's flying away from us. Doing the same exact thing as before. We start with rectangles for the wings and the tail fins. We create a fuselage here. You see me adding, like extending these wings back and slanting them a bit lower so that the wing itself uh, is at an angle. As well for the fuselage, I'm dropping it lower than I normally would. So I don't want it just center lined up with everything. That'll end up looking very, very stiff. So instead, I'm thinking of it as having a underbelly where air intakes and stuff can sit. And for the cockpit itself, you see I created a little slant that goes upwards. The tail fin I'm trying to keep really simple. Uh, I will still go back in and make some minor adjustments to it, but I'm focusing on the angle of the cockpit. So depending on how overlapped on top of your fuselage you make your cockpit can change the whole direction feel of your plane. Uh, since this is a part that's supposed to be uh, centered, if you have it overlapping too much, it'll look like it's skewed off from the center and too far to the right or too far to the left. Uh, depending on where you make that little overlap point. Here you see me dropping in ailerons uh, for the front. I just went with a little propeller. Sometimes it's uh, it works to put a nose cap on it, uh, depending on what kind of design you want. Here you see me trying to fiddle with the cockpit, um, the little metal straps that hold all the glass in. I'm trying to figure out a nice, elegant way to do it, but I, I think it looks way too way too cubey, if that's a word, uh, just too angular. Uh, so I, I try and remedy that by smoothing it out and just having a couple of lines go down the middle. And these lines, again, represent just like a little steel reinforcement, a metal strip for holding in the glass. Now I am uh, pretty happy with that section. I'm moving on to smaller details like the machine guns. It's important to have them lined up in the same same place on both wings. So I just looked at the flaps where the flaps end and uh, decided to put them on the opposite side of the wing on both wings. Here you see me putting in a little slip for the nose mounted machine gun and uh, cleaning up a little bit of the tail as well. Making sure all the lines are facing the same direction, you know, the direction of flight. Uh, all the appropriate lines, that is. Uh, fixing the tail fin a little bit. I thought it was like facing, uh, I thought it was leaning forward, skewing forward a little too heavily. So now all I'm worried about is finishing up the cleanup. We're almost done here. I tried to put in a couple lines for the livery. Didn't really work. Instead, I went back and added trim around the cockpit. Now we're on to the final part, which is to paint the aircraft. And just as I've always done before, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the base colors first. For this plane, however, I did pull up a Google reference of a BF-109 paint job, and I wanted to replicate it, like the historical look. So I'm painting the different sections just as you know the aircraft, the historical aircraft might have them. Um, and I'm using the function of Adobe Animate where you can paint a selection. So it's really easy to select out a few of the components and uh, not worry about it affecting any of the other lines. Here you see me dropping in a shadow for the cockpit itself. And I'm trying to figure out a cool way to do a reflection. Uh, instead, I just went with these kind of grayish blue along the bottom of the cockpit. And uh, now I'm putting in all of the shadows where I deem them to be appropriate uh, for the rest of the aircraft, uh, starting with the yellow paint, now going in and adding a little bit of highlight or mid-tone for the cockpit trim. And now I'm going in and adding the shadow for the rest of the plane. 
uh, we want the underside of the fuselage since it's a little bit rounded we want it to show that at a certain point uh, it's not getting that light anymore so it gets darker and I'm trying to tweak different elements without overdoing it like just hitting the top of the tail fin as you see there with a slightly lighter color as well as some of the ailerons with a highlight edge to kind of illustrate the fact that they're separated from the rest of the wing maybe there's tiny gaps that are causing these uh, these highlights and these shadows and here is the final result of that time lapse um, I I think it turned out great here we're taking a look at the previous airplane uh, I don't love it as much, but it looks all right. So here are a bunch of sketches that I did and just to show you guys that you can use this technique on paper, you know, traditional medium. And uh, a lot of the results are fine. You know, here you can see some of the airplanes that are not as cool looking. Here we have a fighter bomber scene where the fighter is diving in on a bomber. Drawing bombers, very similar approach. Main difference being is now you have... Uh, engine placements in different areas as well as armament for protecting the bomber. Here is another scene. I did this one on the iPad and took my sweet time with uh, just playing around with reflections and really uh, rendering it out. And with that said guys, I hope that the video was helpful to you. Again, keep in mind when drawing planes, draw the wings and tail fins first. Make sure that the fuselage lines up nicely, doesn't look wonky. Keep trying, keep working at it like this technique works more often than not and it's probably the simplest way that I've found uh, to draw an airplane but anyways keep an eye out for the next video we're going to do a battle scene with explosions we're going to incorporate all of the things that I've talked about into one video and with that said I'll catch you guys in the next one